five years, the Communist Party of China unveils a five-year plan. This plan is the conceptualization on where and how the government want the economy of the country to be at in the next half a decade. Last March 2021, China's Xi Jinping released his 14th five-year plan. This five-year plan includes economic growth, people's well-being, dual circulation, innovation, and green development. For many years, China's economy grew with the concept of quantity, cheap, and volume, economy of scale. These are the very essence how Chinese manufacturing had been the epicenter of world production. Quality is not necessarily a word that you can use to describe a product that is made in China. And this word, quality, is the vortex of the 14th five-year plan of China's Communist Party. The main goals of this plan are, one, for China to achieve common prosperity amongst this population, and two, to stabilize China as a global economic power or even take over the United States as the world's main economic power. The transfer of economic power is as old as history itself. Before the United States of America became the land of dreams, before the United States became the world's most powerful economy, there was a superpower called the British Empire. Great Britain was once the world's most powerful economy, circa 1870. During the reign of Great Britain, imports and exports were paid in sterling pounds. During the Cold War, the British Empire dissolved, which left the U.S. to be the world's lone superpower. But before the British Empire, there was an empire in India called the Mughal Empire, circa 1700 Anna Domini. For 1700 years, India was considered the richest country in the world. But before the Mughal Empire, the Song Dynasty, circa 1200 Anna Domini, was the world's superpower. For many years, the Song Dynasty was the world's most powerful economy. And yet again, before the Song Dynasty, there existed a known and well-powerful empire who propagated Christianity as we know it today, the Roman Empire. The Roman Empire reigned through the vastness of Europe, the Middle East, and Asia. The Roman Empire grew and enriched their power through invasion. There had been many more empires and economic powers years before the Roman Empire. This is only to prove a point that economic power travel not only through time, but through different countries. The United States has been the world's most powerful economy since the end of the Cold War, and some records claim even during the beginning of 1800s. The United States had proven to the world that it had the capability to influence global politics and not to mention its dominance in terms of military capabilities. According to CNBC News, the United States will likely remain as the world's richest economy in the next 50 years, measured by GDP. Joe Biden does not like the idea of China being the world's leading economy, as he mentioned in his speech. But they have an overall goal to become the leading country in the world, the wealthiest country in the world, and the most powerful country in the world. That's not going to happen on my watch. The United States is going to continue to grow and expand. But whether he likes it or not, China does have a vast political and financial influence in impoverished countries and emerging markets globally, countries that the various European empires had looted for many years. Circa 1900s, Africa was under the colony of various European powers such as Britain, France, Germany, Belgium, Spain. Portugal, and Italy. The Europeans left, and today, Africa is considered to be the poorest continent on earth. Almost every second person living in the state of sub-Saharan Africa lives below the poverty line, and China sees this as a great opportunity for influence. Many African countries are heavily indebted to China to the tune of 
billions and billions of U.S. dollars. The Democratic Republic of Congo owes China $3.4 billion. Nigeria, $4.8 billion. Ghana, $3.5 billion. Cameroon, $5.5 billion. Kenya, $7.9 billion. Ethiopia, $13.5 billion. And the most indebted of them all, Angola, who owe China a staggering amount of $25 billion. Asia is not doing any better. Many Asian countries are heavily indebted to China as well. Malaysia, Sri Lanka, the Philippines, Cambodia, Maldives, Laos, and the list goes on. In 2020, according to Harvard Business Studies, China and its subsidiaries, meaning its state-owned enterprises, have lent about $1.5 trillion in direct loans and trade credits to more than 150 countries around the globe. This therefore makes China the world's largest official creditor, surpassing the World Bank, the IMF, and all OECD creditor governments combined. In 2020, Zambia had officially defaulted on their debt payment to China. Zambia is Africa's second largest copper producer. Congo and Angola are two of the highest indebted countries to China. Both of these countries have oil resources. China is funding a high-speed rail line in Laos that will cost equivalent to half of the country's gross domestic product. In Pakistan, China invested $62 billion worth of infrastructure and energy projects. $62 billion is equivalent to one-fifth of Pakistan's gross domestic product. These debts are not free. These debts need to be paid. What do you think will happen to a country if they continuously default on paying their debt? The Chinese government can take over the businesses and trades of that country. One example is Sri Lanka. Sri Lanka defaulted on their debt to China, and as a result, they had to lease their port to China for 99 years. The Belt and Road Initiative the Belt and Road Initiative is a behemoth project with China at the epicenter. This project consists of overland corridors and maritime shipping lanes. This project involves 140 countries and half of the world's population. And I will say that again, half of the world's population. Majority of the countries involved with the Belt and Road Initiative are emerging markets in terms of economy, population, production, and consumption. Africa's population in 2021 is sitting at 1.4 billion, equivalent to 16.72% of world population. The population of Asia is currently sitting at 4.7 billion, equivalent to 60% of world population. But the Belt and Road Initiative does not merely involve Asia and Africa. This initiative expands from Asia to Africa to the Middle East to Europe, the Caribbean, and as far as Latin America. The main goal of this project is to further establish the trading relationships of China with the rest of the world. This project involves 40 countries in the Sub-Saharan Africa, 34 countries in Europe and Central Asia, 25 countries in East Asia and the Pacific, 18 countries in Latin America and the Caribbean, 17 countries in the Middle East and North Africa, and six countries in South Asia. And yes, China is the main lender of this project. All of those countries signed a memorandum of understanding with China. This project has been estimated to have cost over $1 trillion thus far. The Belt and Road Initiative has been coined the New Silk Road. This project engages China deeper into the world of business and trade, thus further boosting China's economic and political influence around the globe. As the economic and political power between the U.S. and China mount, it becomes a question if the Belt and Road Initiative is yet again another threat to the economic and political power 
of the U.S. globally. But they have an overall goal to become the leading country in the world, the wealthiest country in the world, and the most powerful country in the world. That's not going to happen on my watch. 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 Meanwhile, China was the only economy to grow in 2020 after posting GDP growth of 2.3%. In contrast, the U.S. economy contracted by 3.5% in 2020 compared to a year ago, estimated by the Bureau of Economic Analysis. Helen Kiao, the head of Asia Economics at the Bank of America Global Research, told CNBC that China's economy would surpass the U.S. economy around 2027 to 2028. The question now is, why is it important for investors such as you and I to understand a possible shift of economic power and political influence between the U.S. and China? And the answer is simple, because if you are looking at growing your investments, if you are looking at generational wealth, you have to be involved, you have to invest in the future, and the future is pointing to China. Thank you very much indeed for watching this video. I hope that you gain value in this video and in my channel as a whole. If you did gain value in this video, please like, share, and subscribe. And I hope to see you certainly on my next video. Thank you very much.